everyone, welcome to CRTV, the Halloween episode. I have to go put on my costume. Be right back. Oh, I'm a mummy. Oh, I'm so excited for today's show. I brought some of my friends along and we're going to have a great time. First up, Teacher Ted has a story for us. Go ahead, Teacher Ted. Leo, a ghost story. This is Leo. Most people cannot see him, but you can. Leo is a ghost. For many years, Leo lived by himself in a house, reading books and drawing pictures in the dust. One day in spring, a family moved into his house. Leo was happy to have real people in his house. He even made them tea and toast. But the family were not so happy. They were scared. This house is haunted, said the dad. I am scared, said the mum. I hate ghosts, said the boy. The family called in experts to get rid of the ghost. Leo knew he was not welcome. He said goodbye to his home and left. I will go to the city, said Leo. Leo had not been to the city for a very long time. It was not like he remembered. It was scary and noisy. Leo asked a police officer where his favorite candy store was. But the officer walked right through him. He saw a girl drawing on the sidewalk with chalk. The girl looked at him. I'm Jane, she said. What's your name? Leo was surprised she could see him. I'm Leo, he said, finally. Do you want to play Knights and Dragons, Leo? Yes, said Leo, because he did. Good, said Jane. First, you have to be knighted by the king. Who is the king? asked Leo. I am, said Jane. That's why I am wearing this crown on my head. Leo looked at her. He did not see a crown. He kneeled down and was knighted. Leo and Jane sat at a table. There was a paper castle. 
and a paper dragon. A paper horse and a paper shield. They played knights and dragons for a long time. Jane, called Jane's mother. Say goodbye to your imaginary friends and come down to dinner. Coming, said Jane. She stood up and went downstairs for dinner. Leo felt bad. She thinks I am imaginary. If I tell her I am really a ghost, she will be scared. After dinner, they played some more Knights and Dragons. Then it was time for bed. You are my best imaginary friend, said Jane. Leo was so happy he could not sleep. He went to the living room to draw a picture. Suddenly, a sneak thief climbed through the window. Stop, said Leo. But the thief passed right through Leo. Leo had an idea. He put a bed sheet over his head and flew after the thief, saying, Woo! 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 The thief was scared and hid in a cupboard. Leo locked the door. The noise woke Jane and her mother, and they called the police. The police car came quickly and took the thief off the jail. Thanks, said Jane. You are welcome, said Leo. But Leo, said Jane, if you are my imaginary friend, how did you scare that thief? I am a ghost, but I am a real friend. Oh, said Jane. Well, that's even better. And they went to the kitchen to have tea and toast. The end. Oh, thanks, Teacher Ted. I love that story. Next up. Let's go to Teacher Ben. Welcome to a Halloween special edition of In the Kitchen with Chef Ben. Today, we are going to be making one of my favorite things to eat on Halloween. And that is fingers. Fingers are very easy to make and <clears throat> they are so delicious. Now, all we need to do is find some fingers. Oh, hey, Teacher Zach. Hi, Teacher I Ben. Just Hi. Need some fingers for some cooking I'm gonna do. Fing? Yeah, fing fing fingers? 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 No, no, no. Come back. Give me the wait, fingers. Wait, 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 wait. Library. Shoes off. Shoes off. Okay, now we just need to cut off Teacher Zach's fingers for our tasty Halloween snack. So, put down some paper towels. Might get a little messy. 
Okay, now we have three fingers. Let's move on to the other hand. Okay, we're not really going to eat fingers for Halloween, but we are going to be making some cookies. Some cookies that are going to look like fingers. Let's begin. Okay, step one. Here are the fingers we want to make our cookies look like. You can see they're green. They have a little fingernail on the end. Okay, so we need to start with our cookie dough. This is our cookie dough I made yesterday, and I kept it cool in the fridge overnight. Now we're going to need to make that cookie dough green. So we're going to use a food color to make this dough green. And here is what our green food color looks like. So now I'm going to mix this dough with our green food color so that we can have green witch finger cookies. First, before you work with any food, make sure your hands are clean. For this step, we're going to need one big bowl. And we're going to need our cookie dough. And then we're going to add a couple drops, you don't need a lot of food color, into our cookie dough. And that's about five drops. Now I'm going to mix it in. Okay, after mixing in the green food coloring, now I have a green ball of cookie dough. Very good. But the next step is we need to put our cookie dough back into the refrigerator to keep it nice and cold. When making cookies, you always want to work with a cold cookie dough. So this is going back into the fridge. Now, our next step to make our cookies look like witch fingers is we need a fingernail. Okay, so for this we're going to use some nuts. In this step, we're going to need some different things. Two are right here. We have our cutting board and a knife. Next, we're going to need the nuts. Here I'm using some mixed nuts, but I'm only going to use one. If you can see, it's right here. Almonds. So I'm going to get out some almonds. Here's what an almond looks like. You can see it looks like the end of our witch finger. So that's going to work really good for us today. Now remember, when we are cutting, we need to be very careful. And for this, you're going to have to work pretty close. So here, let's go in a little closer. We need to cut these in half. So the best way is to put the nut between your fingers and then slowly work the knife down. Pull it away. Great. Now look, we have two fingernails for our cookies. And these are going to work really well for this recipe, we're going to be making about 30 fingers. That means you're going to need to cut 15 almonds in half. Let's begin. Okay, I have my almonds all cut. Now it's time to assemble our cookies. Okay, here is our cookie dough after it's rested in the fridge. Now, we're going to want to work in small pieces. You always want to keep your cookie dough cold. That way, the butter doesn't start to melt. So you take a small piece, and now we're going to make it into a finger. So you can take a piece of wax paper, start to roll out our cookie. Every shape doesn't need to be the same. 
We're just looking for a finger shaped cookie. So we're getting close. Let's make it a little longer. Okay, that should work pretty good. Now let's push in the end. This will be the end of our finger. And you can see there's kind of some joints on our fingers. One, two. So we have some sections that we need to push. So let's make one here. One, two. I'm gonna press down the top, make it a little more round. Okay, now let's move on to the next step. We're gonna try to make our cookie finger look like our finger. Okay, so this will be the top. This is where we're gonna push in to have our fingernail. And here we're gonna set in our almond. Now we just need to make this finger look kind of like our finger. You can do that by taking a knife and making some small cuts. These cuts will make the finger look more like a real finger. Good. So here is our finished cookie. Now you just need to repeat this step with the rest of our cookie dough. Make sure while you're working to only work in small pieces and keep the rest of your dough in the fridge. Okay, we have our first batch of finger cookies ready. Now, we're going to take these cookies and we're going to bake them. So we're going to set the oven at 165 degrees Celsius and bake the cookies for about 20 minutes, 20 to 25. Be sure to check on them every now and then just to make sure they don't burn. Okay, let's bake our cookies. While we wait for our cookies to bake in the oven, we need to finish the last step. Now this last step is going to be making some blood. Now for this, you're gonna need some jam. Today I'm gonna to be using some strawberry jam. And I'm going to make the jam look a little more red with some red food coloring. Just like what we use for the cookie. Here's the green that we use for the cookies. Now we have a red for the blood. So I'll take a small bowl and I'll spoon some jam into the bowl. We are going to be dipping our fingers into the jam once the cookies are cooked and cooled. So you can see this is red, but it's not red enough for blood. So let's add some red food coloring. And we'll just give this a good mix. Good, you can see it's starting to turn more red already. This will make our cookies look even more like they were just cut off. We can let this sit while we wait for our cookies to finish. Our cookies are finished. They're out of the oven. Here we can take a look. And we can see here is our toy witch finger. Here is our cookie witch finger. You can see they became much bigger in the oven, but that's okay. It's just more cookie to eat. They're nice and golden brown on the bottom. And as you can see, our almonds or our fingernails, they fell off while they were baking. So it's time to decorate our cookies. So we need to get out our blood. And I'm going to use a paintbrush Make sure your paintbrush is nice and clean. I'm gonna take a little bit of blood, put it on my cookie or my fingernail should be. This will help act 
as something sticky to keep our almond on our cookie. So now you can just take your almond, press it on. Now it looks kind of creepy too. Now you can see there are some cracks in our cookie. That's a chance you could add a little more blood to the finger if you want. You don't have to. And now the final step. We have our fingernail, our bloody cookie. Now we're going to take our cookie and add some blood to the bottom. Now that is what I call a creepy Halloween treat. You can eat these right away or give them to a friend, give them to your family. But if you don't want to eat them right away, make sure to put them in the fridge. Until next time, this is In the Kitchen with Chef Ben, and I hope you enjoy our creepy Halloween cookie today. Please remember to take pictures if you want to make this recipe. I'll see you next time. Next up, Teacher Chris. Hello, today I will show you how to make a straw roller coaster like this one and this one. It is very easy to make and you only need plastic drinking straws, wooden skewers and a shoe box. Let me show you how. You will need a shoe box wooden skewers, plastic drinking straws, scissors, a utility knife, a marker, and a ruler. Step 1. Use a pencil to design your roller coaster on a sheet of paper. Now I know that I need 12 straws and 24 skewers. Step 2. Use a marker and a ruler to measure your straws. Cut your straws using a pair of scissors. Step 3. Pin your straws to the shoebox with some needles. This will help you to see if you have enough straws and if the straws are cut at the correct length. Step 4. Use a marker to mark the spots where the skewers will go. Make a small cut on each line. Push the skewer into the straw.
Step 5. Use the pointy end of each skewer and carefully push it through the box. Step 6. Push the skewers all the way to the bottom of the box. One by one, pull the skewers to the correct height. Make sure you test it after each change you made, until all the skewers are at the correct height and your roller coaster works perfectly. And that is how you can make your very own drinking straw roller coaster. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I would really like to see some of your roller coasters. You can build it at home or you can ask your teacher to build it in class. See you next time. Goodbye. Now, let's go to Teacher Jack. He will show us some of the work you did last month. Please send us a picture or a video of your project. Send them to TV at gmail.com. Here are the submissions for the month of October. Thank you for all your submissions and thank you for watching. See you next time. Some activities you can do this month are to draw a plan for your roller coaster, make a roller coaster, or make the witch finger cookies. Be sure to take a picture and send it to TV at gmail.com. That's all for today. See you next time.